because this vigilante group didn't understand what pediatrician meant, they thought she, she was a pedophile, and so they basically went to a house and trashed her house and wrote down pedo on the walls, <laughs> right? Vigilantes, but you know, what if I took a camera crew and said, you know, they're now persecuting people who are pediatricians in the West, you know, even though in the West there is obviously a dislike of pedoph pedophiles, of course. And that's exactly the same what's happening in the Muslim world. These vigilantes, some vigilantes sometimes, or, or various groups, don't understand the rules. And, and so if someone just wants to leave Islam and they go and kill that person, they take, it, they take the law into their own hands and kill that person, they're not allowed to take the law into their own hands. They're not allowed to, 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 to do that. So that's, uh, I suppose, where the confusion has arisen, arisen on this. But it's really, uh, it should be renamed uh, a law against those who commit treason. Uh, and in this country, um, you know, uh, treason uh, was an executable offense about 50 or 60 years ago. Technically, theoretically in America, in many states, it still is <laughs> an executable offense. So uh, it's no different. But anyway, I hope that's answered your, your, your question. Um, all right, I think I'll read one of the questions that was, was, was um, uh, uh, given to me. Uh, what if a woman cannot bear kids or is not married and have to support herself or her family or parents, un unfortunately? What are you, your views on that is she the heart of a family, but in a very different light? Okay. Um, I was talking only about marriage. So in a marriage, there are um, defined roles. Now, you might, have the, you might have the case whereby the woman is like the alpha, alpha female, and the man she marries is a beta male. He's not really a very assertive male. And in those situations, you don't, you don't need to say, right, no, you, you, you as the man, you must be the assertive one, and she must be the recessive one, uh, because the exceptions really resolve themselves. And that marriage, the, the, the husband is probably, who married her in the first place, is probably happy to be the more recessive one, and she's more happy to be the more dominant one. And so you don't, you don't need to assert anything. The, the, the sharia doesn't get involved in family affairs. It just sets out guidelines for the roles that uh, they should take. And if uh, the husband is not looking after his wife or not supporting his wife, then she can take him to court to demand that um, he support her and, and uh, he basically give her what, she, what is due to her. That's all, that's, that's all the, the, the aspect of Shari extends to. Now, if she's not married and if she's by herself, uh, then uh, you know, the, the case is that, all right, well, she's, married, she's, she's not married and she's by herself. I mean, the, the, she has no husband of which the Sharia will uh, give guidelines as to, you know, um, to, to look after her. But if she has an uncle or she has a father or she has a brother, it is expected that because it, the, the fundamental unit of, of, a share, of a share of society is not an individual, it's the family. So the brother, the father, or the uncle has to be, provide some kind of guardianship over the, over, the, over the woman such that she doesn't feel the need that she has to... Uh, support herself. If she wants to support herself, then that's fine. I, you know, no one's going to say no or going to say you can't do that. But uh, Sharia just defines these guidelines for expectations. So if you're married, your husband expects to look after you. If, if, if the husband and wife agree that the wife does the work and the husband stays at home, then the Sharia is not going to intervene. We won't intervene. You know, the Sharia won't say, right, no, no, you must, no, you, the husband, must, whatever. Because they've agreed amongst themselves. But, if they, uh, but it's by default it's expected. So the default setting, so to speak, is that the husband supports supports the wife, but the exceptions um, uh, really resolve themselves, and the show doesn't need to get involved with the, with the exceptions. Um, another one uh, question is, capital punishment is uh, institutional planned murder. What is the difference between uh, you and them? Um, I haven't killed anyone, I can assure you. Uh, wouldn't an eye for an eye make the whole world blind? Ah, Gandhi. All right. Uh, well, not Gandhi in the audience, but uh, Gan that was a quote from, from Gandhi. Well, an eye for an eye make the whole, whole world blind. Okay, um, if you didn't punish the, the person who committed uh, murder, uh, then, um, then the whole world, it wouldn't be an eye for an eye, it would be rather um, a life for, you know, people would just be killing each other without no restrictions. I mean, the whole point of the punishment against murder is to prevent murder, i.e. to prevent killing of people unjustly. That's the whole point. That's why you, you have that punishment. And using execution as the, as the means is, is rather the law of, of reciprocated justice. If someone took your life, then the law of equality states that their life is forfeit too, a life for a life. This is why it's actually the law of equality. And if you don't punish that person, you say, yes, I'll, I will, I will uh, allow this person to go and rot in a jail for the rest of their life because that's more humane. You see, um, the equivalent is, instead of taking an eye for an eye, uh, you basically uh, put a cardboard box on that person's head so that like he can't see anything anymore, even though you haven't taken his eyes. You, you, you put a person's life in a jail cell, it's worse than death, basically. You, they're suffering, they're going to be suffering for the rest of their life. 
in a, in a jail cell, their suffering will be more will be disproportionate to the suffering they inflicted by killing that person. So. Um, uh, it, it, we, it's all great and airy fairy. So yes, it's all great to hear this. Like yes, if, all, if only we could, um, you know, not have a punishment for um, uh, for murder that involves execution. But the alternative is worse. That was my point. That was John Stuart Mill's argument. The, the alternative is worse. And if you want to say, well, we don't have a, don't have a punishment for murder, then uh, then if you then you know, good luck living that in that in that society. But um, uh, but Islam does encourage forgiveness. So, but it's at the uh, choice of the family who've lost that person to make that, it's their choice. And Islam encourages them to forgive. But if they don't want to forgive, that's their choice. And you can't take that right from them to um, exact justice. So uh, I said, it sounds nice, but um, uh, you know, uh, Gandhi uh, isn't going to help us in this, in this context. Um, uh, all right, actually, okay, I'll ask one question from the audience and I'll go back to the papers. So any question from the, you brother? How they can establish it? How, and so on. Okay, if I had a if I had a penny for every time someone asked me that question, I'd I'd end world poverty. But um, okay, it, the problem is um, the Muslim world is a construct of post-colonial um, times. Um, the borders that were decided for us, our own flags were decided that were decided for us, uh, were decided for us, and uh, we didn't decide it ourselves. Um, we, and then we were given various governments which were. Uh, supported and propped up by Western powers, and whenever we, we didn't play ball, they would invade us and re-establish another a, a puppet regime, and, and so on. Like Iraq, for example, Iraq in the in the last century has been invaded three times um, by Britain, once during Ottoman times, once during an uprising during World War II, uh, uprising against occupation by the British forces, and then again during the uh, the Gulf War. Uh, the, the last invasion of Iraq is in this century, so I don't I don't count it, but that's a fourth invasion within the last hundred years. Four invasions of Iraq. Uh, Afghanistan has been invaded four times as well, uh, and so I mean, by the same uh, by the same super, superpower, uh, Britain. Um, so, well, we, we, you know, you know what they, they say. You know, we're fighting this war on terror, and you know, we support our boys, the the British troops. This is what they, they say in this society. But they're not fighting. You know, uh, uh, you know, protecting Number Ten Downing Street, or fighting protecting you know London, or the, you, you don't see them. You know, on the cliffs of Dover. You know, re re repelling wave after wave of Taliban's uh, so, you know uh, ships. <laughs> you don't see that. What? Where are they? Where are they doing this fight? They're in Somalia. They're in Afghanistan. They're in Iraq. They're in. Um, uh, well, they were in Yemen. They're in all, all over the all over the, the, the place in these Muslim countries, fighting against people they don't like. For example, there was this uh, group uh, in um, in Syria, which is becoming very popular uh, amongst the Syrian uh, in, uh, uh, fighters against uh, President Assad. I think it was uh, was it Nusrat al Islam or something? I forget the exact name. Um, and uh, America, they were becoming popular. They want Islamic state. Right? They want Islamic state, Sharia state. And they're becoming very popular, and they're, they're viewed as heroes. Uh, they're very humane in terms of how uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, amongst Syrians anyway, they're viewed as very humane. And what did America do? It banned them as a terrorist organization. That no one can support them, no one can help them, and no one can, can aid them at all. Why is that? It's because they want to establish Sharia. And Sharia has all these policies which will be very detrimental to the Western economic system and the continued supply of resources into uh, the Western world. And even amongst all these resources that they, they pump into the Western world, uh, they still can't resolve economic inequalities in their own country, and they're under a, a massive recession, uh, which, uh, and so on. So even though they have all the resources they, you know, at their command, they're still under recession. Um, look at Mali, for example, when France in, intervened into Mali. Um, France, um, I think about 85% of its energy is based on nuclear power, and uh, Mali is one of the very strong, strong exporter of uranium. So, you know, coincidence. So this is, you know, this is one of the problems. So uh, the Muslim world is, very, you know, we, even with the, the recent revolutions, the so-called revolutions, uh, in, in Egypt, like the Muslim Brotherhood got to power, but they, they, didn't, they didn't change the system. They inherited the system. 
and now they're restricted now. So they, they, they're restricted. They can't, uh, in fact, under the Muslim Brotherhood now, because of all the pressure they're under, they couldn't implement a full Sharia system. Maybe a, a, few, token, a few token laws here and there. But under the Muslim Brotherhood now, recently, they've, um, they've, they've caved under so much pressure that uh, they've now cut off all the, the tunnels supplying uh, Gaza 